I have some solutions for my cups and for my plates. So the cups are going to go on hooks for mugs. This can go just like that. I have room for four uh, mugs basically. And then if I have any other cups I will that don't have handles or something, I'll have to find a different solution. These individual plate racks are a really great idea. They're, it's not my idea, it's something that I saw in another YouTube video for another van build, so I will leave a link to that video down below. But basically all it is is a little slot that the plate goes into and you just size the slot so that it's slightly smaller than the plate so that the plate can't fall through. Now it's a bit of a balancing thing, obviously you don't want to, to go too low or it'll fall out that way, but this, where it is now, because this is right up against the plate, this uh, cross beam here, it can't move that way, it's very secure, and the only way to remove it is to lift it straight up. As you can see I've made some progress with this wall here. I needed a place to put my cast iron cookware and this seemed like the perfect place to put it. I have uh, two skillets here which together make a Dutch oven and then I've got one uh, saucepan there and then a lid for the saucepan. The pans themselves are held in place with these uh, brass hooks here and behind each of these hooks I made another screw going straight through this paneling into the plywood and studs so that it's super secure here but hidden. And then this one here, this is a bit of an old belt that I uh, cut up and the lid can slot right in there. These pots were moving around even though the van wasn't going anywhere so I realized I needed to secure them. So what I've done is I've run a bungee cord from the hooks which actually they go on themselves all the way down to a little cup hook down at the bottom there which is actually upside down. So I've cut down this shelf which was part of the bookshelf which I took apart for lumber and then I've added on this little end piece here. This is gonna hold uh, mason jars up in the kitchen. Here's the L bracket that I've made. It's also kind of a hook that you could hold towels or something on. And then there's this notch cut out here at the back where this little L bracket can be put in place. We're looking at the bottom of the shelf here and because the lip doesn't extend downwards, I've routed a hole going down here. It's a channel that goes back and back to the wall so that I can put in these LED lights inside here so you don't see them at the underside of the cabinet. The shelf is now in place above the stove and sink. Right now it's just being held in place on this side with an L bracket here and then several up top. I've added on the L bracket here and it's screwed in from the top as well as one screw right there going directly into the wall to sort of keep it in place there. Uh, hooking up these lights turned out to be a bit of an issue, but I did get it working. And they go all the way back there. Uh, for some reason when I tucked them in here they kept breaking, so um, I kind of had to keep cutting down lengths and I basically used up all of my roll on this light, but that's fine. I wasn't going to use it anywhere else. As you can see here, this shelf is meant to hold dry goods in mason jars or anything else that's sort of of a similar size. So I've got quite a large pantry there. Um, I'm going to have to start collecting uh, more jars for sure. I want to hang this copper kettle underneath of that shelf. So I've made a little hook that fits around the handle here even though it's curved and that'll go up here. I've been wanting to do this for a very very long time. This is one of the original things I wanted to do with this van is hang this copper kettle up in it and boy does it look good like this. Above the pots and pans, I've hung this little fruit hammock here. I've seen these in a lot of builds and it just seems like a great way to stop your fruits and veggies from getting bruised. I got this idea here from an Indie Projects video which I'll link down below. These are old British pennies and it just looks so much better than it did before with just the red, uh, black rubber covering here for these outlets. So I've just epoxied them in place. You can see that this one here is being clamped. It just, oh, it looks so great. These two outlets have yet to be installed. So I found some really interesting ones here. This one on the right here is from 1918. That means that this is a hundred year old, that penny right there. How cool is that? I was originally going to place this socket 
by where those cords are at the wall behind the stove. However, I've been thinking about this, and if I ever plug anything into that, then the cords have to run directly next to the stove, and I'm not so sure that that's such a good idea. So I've decided to move the socket to the edge here of this cabinet. Okay, so I've just taken a jigsaw and cut out a hole that should accept the sockets. Yeah, that works perfectly. I've run the cable from there all the way up to the new outlet. And I'm going to tuck it up here so that it's not in the way of anything. But if I bring you over here, you can see that the USB is actually working. I made this little junction box here. It's not very pretty, but it will work. And that's just to cover the insides because they're exposed on the inside of this cabinet. I don't want anything bumping into the electrical wires and jarring anything loose. Here you can see the junction box fully installed and the wires going in on top. This should protect the socket from any goods inside the cupboard. Now that I've made those changes to the kitchen, this is fully move in ready for me. So this just this morning, I went downtown to ICBC and they gave me some paper plates and I've put those on the van here and I've emptied everything out of the van. So here it is all under tarps on the front lawn. It'll go right back in. What I need to do now is to drive this down to the dump where I can get it weighed. Then I can bring it back to ICBC and they will uh, will do an inspection. And after that inspection, I can get it registered as an RV. Okay, so things didn't go quite as smoothly as I had hoped. Uh, the first thing that I did was I brought the van down to the dump to get it weighed. And it weighs 3,620 kilograms, which is uh, 3.99 uh, tons. So basically it's four tons because um, I had everything taken out of it before I went down. Then I brought it down to BCAA and they went through what I needed to do to, do to get it converted to the motorhome. I'd been down there, I'd talked to them before and I'd, they'd gone through all the steps that I needed. And when I brought it down there, then they finally uh, told me that I needed to get a vehicle inspection. That is really frustrating because they said that I did not need one. I asked specifically about that. And because this is uh, a vehicle that's still registered in, in BC, they said I didn't. Uh, but when changing the body style, apparently you need to get one. I only got paper plates for one day today because I thought I'd be able to have real plates on it. So I'll have to get, uh, that's another $30 for the day that I need to go get it inspected. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of money. Um, I also need to make some changes to my build. There are five uh, checkpoints to be get to be registered as a motorhome and you need to qualify for uh, three of them. And they are designed or used primarily for accommodation during travel or recreation and designed or intended to be detachable. I'm supposed I assume that's in the case of a trailer. Furthermore, you need to have sleeping facilities, and at least three of the following attached to the chassis in a manner that requires a tool for removal. Cooking facilities, which I have. Refrigeration or icebox facilities. Now, I don't ha currently have uh, that, uh, basically, con it's, it's just a removable cooler. So what they want me to do when I talk to them is they want me to make, is basically screw down, bolt down that uh, cooler, and then that will qualify. Self-contained toilet. Um, what I have doesn't count. Uh, the, the composting toilet will count, but they also want me to um, uh, to bolt down the toilet and make it one solid piece. Uh, I'll get back to that later. Heating or air conditioning. They got mad about the wood stove. I'm not terribly surprised that they got mad about that. Um, it doesn't count as heating because they think it's a fire hazard. Um, and But what does get me air conditioning is the fantastic fan. So for some reason that counts as air conditioning. So because it's not hooked up to the um, engine or the starter battery, because it runs on solar, that counts. So if you've been paying attention, I have two. And the portable water system, including a faucet and sink, they also pass that. So that's three. So you would think that if I need to meet three of the five, that I would be good but they decided to change the rules and they want specifically for me to use, do the toilet and the ice box. So, um, I mean, 
I don't have a choice. They're not going to um, do it, and it's wrong. Um, it seems like it's it goes against what their actual rules are, um, but it doesn't seem worth it to me to push back. So all I'm I'm, I'm just going to make those simple changes, and then I meet that. Uh, so that was all good until she had an afterthought and decided to check if I needed a vehicle inspection. Um, which, like I said, I'd been down there several times. I'd asked about that. They said no. Turns out you do need one. And because this is registered as a commercial vehicle, it seems like I need to get a commercial vehicle inspection. That's what she told me. But when I called ICBC directly, they said that I needed to get a motorhome inspection, uh, which is a different thing. So I'm still not quite sure what I'm doing. I've signed up for a commercial vehicle inspection next week. Um, that's the thing is, I guess it's going to take me a long, it's going to take me another week to be able to start using this and, uh, all that, you know, that's, uh, it's a shame, but what can I do? In order to comply with BCAA's, uh, changing of the rules here, I've put two screws in the bottom of this bucket. You can see one there and one right there. So this is now secured in a manner that requires a tool for removal, right? So yeah, I put a hole in my bucket. That's really annoying, but uh, I do use bags in these anyway, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. I don't want to give them any opportunity to fail me on this. So I've attached the lid uh, to the actual structure here using this piano hinge on the back here. So now this can lift up. The main issue that I have with this is that this is as far as it goes and it doesn't stay up. Um, so it does mean that accessing the bag in the toilet is going to be a little bit of a pain. Um, but, you know, after I pass the inspection, if, if this really bothers me, I can always go and take that out, of course. I thought long and hard about how I could get this to qualify as being permanently installed and not removable without a tool. And I just can't think of a way. If I screwed this into the drawer, uh, it could work but the drawer is removable. However, the drawer is not removable unless you actually take that door off its hinges, uh, just because it, that door interferes with it. So I'm not sure what they'd think about that. They might not approve of it being in a drawer. I don't want to give them any excuses like I've said before. So what I've done is I've taken a second cooler uh, that my dad gave to me. He just said, you know, take it because he knows that I need to try and pass this and I've placed it here under the bed. I've just taken down the curtain temporarily to show this to you guys. So this, I have screwed with screws there, there, and one uh, up at the front here. It does go into my nice flooring, but it is under the bed behind the curtain where you don't see it, so I'm okay with that. This is a second cooler. Uh, this is the one that I'll be showing them to qualify for as a non-removable ice box. So you would need a tool to remove this. I can't see how this wouldn't pass, and you know, it it does take a bunch of space that I <laughs> rather it wouldn't, but for the purposes of passing this examination, uh, this is going to work. Things aren't looking very good right now regarding insurance. I went to this uh, BCAA and I talked again because I had a concern. They told me to get a commercial vehicle inspection. Right now, the van is considered a commercial vehicle. Uh, in order to get it transferred to a motor into a motorhome, they wanted a commercial vehicle inspection because that's what it is right now. But it makes more sense that you would want to get a personal vehicle inspection because a motorhome is considered a personal vehicle. So that's the inspection that you would want to get because you want it to be one. So when I raised this concern to them today, uh, they said, oh yeah, sure enough, that's what you need. You need a personal inspection, not a commercial vehicle inspection, which they told me to get. So I've changed my appointment for next week to a personal vehicle inspection. So hopefully I'm back on track there. Uh, the bad news comes in where I know I'm not going to pass that inspection. Just be quiet and you can stay. So the mechanic at the shop thinks I'm going to fail my inspection, and I agree. My handbrake doesn't work, and one of my windshield wipers doesn't work. So I know for sure I'm going to fail on that. And I, I, when I went in, I asked, is that something that I can get repaired the same day? And he said, no, I'm just booked in for an inspection. We both sort of think that because this is an older vehicle, it's from 1990, that there's going to be other problems that are going to show up, and then I'll have to fix those anyway. 
So he suggested that I get the inspection, fail it. That'll give me a checklist of things that I need to fix. And if I can't fix them myself, obviously I can bring them to a mechanic or, you know, I can't fix anything myself. But if I can't find someone who can help me out with that, uh, then I can get them fixed and then go back in. I have 30 days and I'll get a free inspection, second inspection in order to pass. So that's kind of good news that uh, I have the personal vehicle and commercial vehicle thing sorted out. The bad news is that that whole process of, of going to the mechanics because they're so busy uh, it's going to take a long time for me to get this inspection passed because next Wednesday is uh, when I'm having the inspection done and then I still have to, you know, get everything fixed and get the, the, the second inspection. I have to book that. Who knows when that'll be. Then I need to bring it into BCAA and hope they don't throw any more curveballs at me. So it's going to be a while until I can uh, definitely, I'm thinking, and uh, it just sort of seems to me like there's no way this is going to happen before June. So I'm going to not be able to, to launch my mission here for a little bit longer than I hoped for. Uh, I've really hoped to be moved in right now. And that's just not going to happen. Um, it doesn't make, I can't afford to insure it uh, the way that it is now. I'd have to get it just doesn't make any sense for me to do it that way. And I might, I probably can't afford to do all this mechanical work, but it is, I, I, I'm going to have to find a way to do that. And deferring, uh, the d deferring the insurance till June, instead of getting it done here in May, that might offset some of those costs. Um, you know, it's something that I probably should have planned for a little bit better is uh, money for the mechanical side. Uh, I definitely um, should have probably got it inspected when I bought it and fixed those things up. But I didn't know I needed to be, have an official inspection. I'm perfectly fine with the way that this vehicle is running besides the uh, parking brake, which I was going to get fixed anyway. But, uh, you know, who knows what they're going to find when they do that um, on Wednesday. So this is where I'm going to leave today's video. It's everything's a little bit up in the air. Things aren't looking so good, but I do have a plan of action for how to fix it. And the next video you see from me, uh, hopefully I know a little bit more about the condition of my vehicle. So I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.